What's going on guys, King Shrats here, back another video on the channel, and today, man, it's been so long since I've made my own food, let alone my own, my own food. What I mean by that is, I've been eating everybody else's cuisine. I, I've gone basically all over the world trying different people's, well not over the world, but in my own backyard, trying different people's cuisines for the first time, and I forgot about my own roots. So that's what we did today. We have got a nice little soul food lineup. I cooked myself. Yes, I did make this myself. Uh, I don't really cook often, and I did this as a freestyle at the last minute. So we have got some different things that I grew up eating, and I really enjoy eating, and that is what we're going to share today. And we also, for the first time on this channel, I will be replying to your comments. I'm always in the comment section, but I'm gonna reply on camera, so your own comments, your own questions, your own stuff, I picked about 10 to 15 of them to go through and kind of just clear the air on certain things, and no, I will not be talking about the scar on my face. That story is for another day, and I will not tell it right now. I don't mean that as a disrespectful manner, it's just because, again, I was having a conversation today, it's more about a traumatic type of experience, and, and you don't want to relive trauma every single day when you're trying to bring up something. One day, I promise, when I'm ready to let that out there, I will put it, I will bookmark it, everybody can have it, but not today, that is not that day. We're going to answer some, well, kind of weird, kind of different, whatever questions that I get asked frequently. I haven't done this in a while, and I'm excited to do it, so that is what we have today. This lineup, you're digging the content, you want to see more of these Q&As. A lot of people have a lot of questions, I have a lot of answers. So that is what we will do, as long as you guys respond well to this video. So hit that like button, drop your questions or comments in the comment section and I might just pick yours in a video when we do this again but if you like comment and subscribe I promise you I will continue to do this because I have fun doing it but let me give you the quick little lineup of some of the stuff again that I grew up eating I swear this is almost like mom made it but it's macro friendly meaning I try to keep my waistline what it is this is some of the stuff that I would eat off camera or when I'm doing this kind of stuff on camera let me go through the lineup real quick first we got some black eyed peas y'all see the black eyed peas right there no I'm not talking about Fergie and them or will I am and them boys but black eyed peas are not a pea for people who don't know they're actually a bean uh, but they are called that let me see if I can pick up a little bean real quick so if you don't know, that is what the, the back looks like. But they're called the black eye pea because they look like they have a black eye. Um, very common in, in African-American cuisine. A lot of black people make them. Mom made them all the time. I'm making them now. We have some rice. <laughs> I mean, everybody eats rice. Black people eat rice, too, a lot more than you think. Maybe at least in my house, we did. My mom used to like the little sasson in there. That's where I got that yellow rice idea from, to be honest. So we have the yellow rice. Y'all already know what yellow rice looks like, but I'm going to show it to you because I love you. And, of course, the staple every holiday, every something. Got the collard greens right there. Love me some collard greens right there on the bottom of the green. Yes, it is the green part of a collard plant. And um, yeah, I grew up eating them. Most black people did. I absolutely love them. Kind of got this the way I make them. And my family does a little bit of vinegar. We did, I didn't use the pork fat, but a lot of times it's pork fat in there. Um, or or uh, my, my sister or my mother will sometimes use turkey bacon um, because, you know, they try not to eat pork. Yes, there's a lot of black people who don't eat pork as well, and it worked. I didn't grow up Muslim or anything like that, but uh, didn't eat a lot of pork growing up as well, so in, in this case, I just had more of a vinegar base. There's no fat in there again because I'm trying to keep it a lean version, and I was going to make smothered chicken, but I'm too lazy to make the gravy, bro. I didn't want to do it, so I did something else my mom always used to do, and that's the barbecue chicken. Air fried, instead, chicken thighs. Usually it's chicken on a bone growing up, but I use chicken thighs again. A little bit of variation, and you got the barbecue sauce nice and hot and ready on there. And no meal complete growing up, especially, was not there without the hot sauce. Uh, it was always Frank's or Louisiana, but I like this Old Bay hot sauce. Um, so that is what I have. This thing is a lifetime supply. I don't know why you never run out of hot sauce when you have it. Um, but I, I rarely, if ever, run out of hot sauce. Or I just buy another one. I don't really know. But I feel like this one bottle I had for like four years. So I don't know if it's just me. But, you know, again, people don't know this. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of biracial, but shh. Um, I do have members of my family that are not black. And, and they put their hot sauce in the... Uh, in the fridge. But most black people I know don't put their hot sauce in the fridge. You don't have to refrigerate this. There's nothing on here that says refrigerate after opening. It's, it's literally just cayenne peppers, vinegar, walt, water, salt, garlic powder. That's what's in most hot sauces. You don't have to refrigerate it. I never did. Um, so it's not cold. Like, I don't, yeah, let me know in the comments if you eat hot sauce. Do you refrigerate your hot sauce? Like, I'm talking like the vinegar based hot sauce, not the kind that's all the crazy stuff, but you gotta have a little bit of that. What I like to do with the hot sauce is this. Um, I'll show you real quick. I'm just gonna tilt this up for you real quick. I like to get especially on my greens, nice little little helping. Okay, a little more. And now get some on the rice. Really, I put it on everything, and I'm trying to make it sound cooler than normal. And then I chuck some on the black eyed peas as well. Yep, all of that. And then that's the first layer. A lot of times as I'm eating, I might not since I'm running my mouth, what I'll usually do after that is, is I just start throwing it on there bite after bite. But for some reason, this bottle never runs out. Like, I feel like I've used so much of it, but there's still like a half left. 
I don't know what it is. But let's get into the questions. Again, these are totally random. I just picked like 15 different comments. Uh, some of them are questions, some of them are not. I found them funny and I wanted to reply to them. So here we go. The first comment says, stop eating so well for once. Just come out eating plain rice and beans or a pack of top ramen noodles while looking all sad and shh. He didn't put the tea. I like that. I didn't get demonetized. Got rice and beans, bro. I got you. Say less. I mean, it's not plain, but it is rice and beans. So I do eat a lot of chicken and rice, believe it or not, but it's usually something like this. If y'all eat unseasoned stuff, I don't know how to tell you that, uh, but it is what it is. As far as ramen, I've made a lot of ramen. I actually made ramen like a week ago, but I think that was only for like TikTok. But you know, ramen, I I'm, I'm from the trenches, bro. I grew up eating a lot of ramen and even in college, I eat even more ramen. Ramen's more college than trenches, but I did eat ramen as a kid. Anyway, let me get into the chicken real quick. And before I get more into this, I like that question. There we go. Look, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at that. See how I just see how I just do that? See how I just I don't want to just drop chicken all over the place. Y'all see all the saucy sauce on there. The saucy barbecue saucy sauciness look. It's gonna be messy as hell. I'm trying not to make too much of a mess. I might eat the rest. I got a fork over here, but I don't like rice with a fork. So I usually have a spoon. Let's get some of that black eyed peas and the rice to just mix that all in. We ain't gotta be pretty with this. Here we go. I missed this shit, man. Sorry, I cursed, didn't I? Why have I stopped eating soul food, bro? We gotta get some soul food in, in this lineup. I'm going all over the world, and I'm, I'm still, I'm, I mean, every once in a while, I got some collard greens, right? Some fried chicken, some mac and cheese. I ain't got no mac and cheese today. I'm gonna have some mac and cheese, trust me. It's my favorite. We ain't doing today. I know somebody gonna comment that too. Shush, I know. These questions are all from different videos because my comment section is for my the creator app on the back end. It doesn't section them off. So I'll try to remember which ones came from which, if they matter. This one says, it doesn't really matter the whole thing, so I'm gonna read the part that I'm gonna reply to. It says, question, does that lip piercing hurt? I have my tongue pierced and it didn't hurt at all until a couple days after, and it was swollen. And very People always ask about lip ring. Let me be honest about this. One, the reason I got the lip ring in the first place was because I was bored. I told people think I'm lying when I say I do stuff because I just do it. Like I don't care. I remember this. I was in college. I was with my boy, right? My homeboy. We, we used to go to this, uh, this like 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 Chinese restaurant that was in the mall across. Sometimes we would just go for lunch and just chop it up, whatever. Before we went out that night, you know what I'm saying? That's a whole other story. And anyway, I'm random like this. So one day we was finishing up. I was eating an egg roll, and I just remember being like, "Yo, I'm gonna get a piercing, bro." And now he did not like me. You know, I'm weird. He had no piercings, he had earrings, that's it. You know, he's very much a conventional, you know, black male, which is cool with me. Most of my friends are conventional black males, except for the Italian guy you see all the time, that don't matter. I said, bro, I'm gonna get a piercing. And he was like, bro, like, he was like, yo, why, bro? Like, he gave me that look, and I was like, I don't really know. I'm gonna get my lip pierced. So we went, he sat there, and he just stared at me the whole time like I was freaking crazy. A lot of things I do, my friends stare at me like I'm freaking crazy. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you. So that's why I got it. As far as it hurting, I'm going to be honest with you. Again, college was 10 years ago. I've had it for 10 years. I forget it's there half the time. It doesn't hurt. Piercings, if you have your tongue pierced, I used to have a tongue ring. Another thing I did when I was, well, no, that was actually a uh, Jersey Shore. A long story. I'll tell that one later. So, tongue ring hurt more. The piercing didn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It swelled a little bit. So, you was kind of like for a little bit, but the tongue piercing was worse. I've had a lot of piercings in my life. I've had a nipple ring, both, not at the same time. I've also had an eyebrow ring when I was in high school. Um, don't know why. One day I just said I'm doing it and I did it. So, I've had a lip ring, a tongue ring, an eyebrow ring, and a nipple piercing. I also have, a lot of people don't notice this one, but I have one right here, uh, near my eye. Um, that was a week after the Chinese food, same, same incident. I was like, bro, I'm gonna get another one. He was like, he just rolled his eyes and went with me. You know, my friends accept me because I'm weird, but I'm still cool, bro. Like, you know, I just be like to be different. So I just sometimes if I'm in the mood to do something, I feel like people are afraid to do it. Like, I'm the one that'll be like, nah, I'll do it. I got this. It's always been a personality trait of mine. I'm not afraid to go the other way just because. So, no, nah, it doesn't hurt. I told you a story to Lipper. Now, this one is funny. This man comments on my stuff all the time. Cool dude, and I know he's just giving me crap. And I don't mind that stuff. But this is a very common 
uh, comment that people give. All right, so it's my man Malcolm, okay? I know you're probably watching. You watch a lot of videos. You comment all the time. I appreciate you. I'm not, again, I'm not saying this, all these stuff. If I'm answering these questions, I don't, I'm not taking it the wrong way. But this is a very common one that people say. And all he said, have to clean the bones, my guy. That's all he wrote. In every video that I do chicken, whether it be Korean, I did the Jolly Bee, KFC, any chicken on a bone. Someone will write stuff like that. Now, I just want to clarify this. Most of the time when I'm eating chicken or anything where I didn't cook it, a lot of times it's more of a review. So I'm not looking to finish anything that I eat. I don't finish 90% of the food that I eat that's not cooked by me. And if you watch frequently, you can attest to that. So while I understand, because my own family would yell at me for not finishing chicken, the thing that I'm doing is I'm trying to keep the video going for the sake of, I'm not just doing mukbangs a lot, I'm doing reviews. And when I review, I'm just here to describe to you what it tastes like and then move on to the next item. I don't want to sit here just smacking on food with nothing to say, especially with the review type stuff. So it was a lot in the Jollibee video, um, the Lauren's chicken video I did. Any video, like you don't finish a chicken on a bone. And I get what you're saying, but if I eat a sandwich and only eat a third of it, <laughs> isn't it the same thing? So I get you, but it's more for the sake of the review. Not coming from a shady point, and neither was he, neither was anybody that says that. So I, I would probably comment the same thing if I'm really not like understanding where my mindset is. Hopefully that does clear it up though. I don't know what video this is from, but it made me laugh. People say things like that, this a, a lot too as well. And all it says, it says you need to be an actor, bro. Your energy is amazing, I'm just saying. And I've had people comment stuff like that. Like, you, you should, I, I would watch you on TV or... First of all, that's flattering as hell. Because I'm not an actor. But, with that being said, I'm also not an actor. And what I mean when I say that is, if it was some sort of, like, improv or, or something like that where I could just be myself, I wouldn't mind doing it. Hosting a food show. Again, you're playing yourself. But, from the sense of being an actor, I don't know if I could read lines well. Because, I don't know if I'm a good actor, I'm just kind of myself. And if people like that, like, you're not liking a portrayal of who I'm trying to be. Anybody who sees me in real life, like, this is who I am. I'm very much like this, you know? So, people saying stuff like that, like, I truly appreciate it, but... I don't think I could act. Like, if I had to read lines, I'd be like, and uh, um, I'd start reading. So, I don't really know how that one will work out. Get my drink real quick. They ran out of baby juice, bro. So I got the, the distilled water. They didn't even have the regular kind. Don't drink distilled. Shh. Always gotta be that one person. Let me go. Uh, this is raspberry lemonade this time. Sugar free. I ain't got no ice, bro. I forgot to put ice back in my ice cube trays. <laughs> I would have wish I had ice. It's warm. I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you, but it still hit. Next one, and this is again, someone who watched my videos all the time. A lot of times people that do it, y'all like to give me crap, and I find it funny, so I start laughing. And the comment says, King, I'm gonna need you to review that pickle slushy from Sonic. Funny. And they said it with, with the laughing emoji. For those who don't know if you're new to the channel, I absolutely hate pickles. There's actually a video on my channel where I bit a pickle accidentally. And I immediately, like, I couldn't show it. I, I, I kind of, yeah. So, I don't like them. Most people ask why I don't like them. And the same reason why you don't like something when you don't like it. There are certain things that people eat, and everybody has stuff. I don't know anybody who likes absolutely everything. Maybe you do. But... I find the taste unpleasant, the texture unpleasant, the smell unpleasant. Um, there's nothing about pickles that I like. That includes any form of relish, um, anything that involves, and again, I have to clarify this too because people say it all the time. When I'm talking pickles, I'm not referring to anything that's pickled. I'm referring to what people call a pickle. So I do eat pickled vegetables, pickled jalapenos, pickled banana peppers. I like them. But 
pickled cucumbers and all of its variations, I, uh, ugh. Also, for those who don't know, I made this deal a long time ago, and I'm going to double down on it because I'm not going to back down on this. It's going to be a nasty time. But back when I was just starting the channel, I think I had maybe 8,000 subscribers when I first declared this. I stupidly decided it was a good idea because somebody said, bro, I would watch you eat a pickle, and I said I will at 100,000 subscribers. I never in a million years thought I would hit 20,000 subscribers <laughs> or 30. Um, I don't know what the number is, but I know it's over 50. So, oh, when that day happens, I'm going to double down on it, and you guys are all going to laugh hysterically. I may have to do some editing um, or bring a bucket because I'm really, really... Really, I don't like pickles. It's comment. It's pretty straightforward. But sometimes people do say stuff like this, and sometimes people say the opposite. But I learned this a long time ago, you can't please everyone. And again, there's no maliciousness in, intended in this from either person. I always have to say that, because I don't want people to think I'm, I'm not offended by this. But I always try to answer things as long as you're not rude. And all it says, it says, Hey, King, I'm loving this content. 20 minutes is not long enough. Yesterday's video was 20 minutes long. Some videos I do are 45 minutes long. Some videos I do are 20. I've had some that are 15. And whatever. Two things about that. Number one, I will never, never milk content. I know there are creators. I've seen it, and I think it's, it's kind of cringe. That will try to make their videos longer Especially because if you don't know, after 8 minutes, your video is eligible for monetization. If it's 7 minutes and 50 seconds, you cannot make money doing it. So some people will drag the video out to get it to 8 minutes, and they don't really have anything to say. They'll show little excerpts and, you know, like, longer cutscenes or just standing there. It's all the tricks of the trade. And I don't mind people. Make your bag. But for me, if I can get my point across in 20 minutes, I'm going to take 20 minutes. Sometimes video takes longer. I never once look at the tank. The timer, there's no timer on my camera. I never look at it and say, oh, you know, this video needs to be longer or shorter. Um, so I, I just go until I feel like I got my point across and then I turn it off. My videos have minimal editing. I do have to splice things together at times or add overlays. And this one, you'll see the questions popping up, but there's not a lot of, like I don't do special effects or any of that stuff. It's just me talking. There's no script, there's no nothing. I don't walk into, into videos knowing what I'm going to say. I will have topics that I want to discuss, but it's never something where, you know, I'm reading off a freaking cue card or saying, oh, let's talk and let's make sure you say this. I don't do that. I turn a camera on and I go. <laughs> That's all I do. So sometimes it'll be longer, sometimes it'll be shorter. The second part of that is sometimes instead of taking days off, I will do what I call load management. I don't take days off doing much of anything. I work pretty much six to seven days a week. I work out six to seven days a week. I make videos seven days a week. So I won't take days off, but what I will do is if I'm feeling a little tired or under the weather or something like that, I will manage my workload that day. I'll make sure I get what I have to get done to the best of my abilities, but I will have goals or whatever I'm doing that day set so they're not as long. It's just me so I don't burn myself out, but I don't take days off. And my workouts, if I'm a little too sore, I might switch a body part, I might turn to just cardio, I might back off the workout, the, the, the intensity, but I'll still get it done. And that's what I've done for a very long time. I got the idea, actually. The load management idea actually came from a basketball player, Kawhi Leonard. They talked about it all the time, he had knee problems, so they would manage his minutes. Or being like a pitcher in baseball, they would have like an innings limit or a pitch count where you get to 100 pitches, or one day they'll say, okay, you only got 70 today. That's kind of what I do. I'm not gonna change my output, but the load management, is because I don't wanna take a full day off. I'm just not built that way. If there ever comes a day where I take a complete day off, it was, trust me, I must be something wrong. Now we have a W badge comment. When I say W badge, I have members on the channel, again, um, that, that are part of like the, the membership uh, group that I have where sometimes I will answer questions from them or, or behind the scenes or post things. Um, if I'm doing something, they'll get a sneak preview or whatever. And all that really means on the, the channel is that they get highlights and they get a badge next to their name and icon, 
which is literally a little black dude with a crown on his head. Get it, King? Huh? So, got a W batch comment. And I always said, if you have something to say, I'm going to get it in, so I got it in. And what it says, we're talking about the movie we watched yesterday, or that I reviewed yesterday, which is called Prey. It's the Predator prequel. And he says, I loved Prey. Easily the second best of the franchise, which I made the same statement, so he was agreeing with me. And he said, it looked like the end was disappointing to him. It seemed stupid when everything else was done. So I replied, I'm going to put it up there. I said, why? I like people to articulate. If you tell me you don't like something, I'm cool with that. You don't have to agree with me. Just tell me why. I'm curious. I'm not, like, judging you. But if I'm asking you why, that's why. So he said, it seemed like the Predator didn't realize, I can't really give away this, um, he just didn't like the way the ending went. How, you know how these movies go. And I'm just going to say this. I talked about this before. I think some people think that because of the ending that the Predator was weak. Or like they, it was not believable because the Predator wouldn't do that. And that's what he was getting to. I'm not going to give it away. But I'm going to say this because I did say it in the, in the review as well. This iteration of the Predator is called the feral predator like a feral cat it's a feral predator for a reason it's more primitive it's not as imposing even though it still is it's not as much as the jungle hunter which appeared in predator one or the city hunter in predator two and so on this one was more on a trial trying to prove itself looking for whatever it, it wasn't an advance i'm i said this before and i can say it again because it's not a spoiler if this iteration of the Predator in the movie Prey would have went to the jungle and fought Arnold and them boys, he would have got wiped. I believe that. This And they did that for a reason. Again, it's the 17th century, 1700s, I should say. And it didn't have the same arsenal or the intimidation or the hunting ability. It got beat up. No spoilers, but it got beat up multiple times throughout the movie. And the other Predators, they might take a straight bullet, but them boys are like, ah, oh, got the bullet. And they just patch it up and keep moving. It, it's like, but we weren't finna get it like in a hand-to-hand -hand type of combat or anything like that. It just didn't happen. So, while I get what you're saying, and a lot of people did say that, without giving away the plot points or anything, I will say that this one was less imposing. They did that for a reason. So it did make mistakes. It did do stupid things. It did do things that... These other, again, jungle hunters, so on and so forth, would not have done. So, I feel like some people missed that point. But that's why they called it the Feral Predator. It wasn't the same. It wasn't even as tall as the other Predators. This Predator was about 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, the other Predators were 7' foot plus. Seriously, look it up. Kevin Peter Hall <laughs> played um, one of the original Predators. And he was 7'3". An actual guy. Also, fun fact. Completely not relevant to this topic. But true. The original Predator, the first one, was Arnold. The original person who was supposed to play that Predator was John claude Van Damme. What happened was, he actually turned it down because he didn't want to be in a movie where he wasn't allowed to be seen because the Predator wears a helmet and a mask. You can't see who's under it. So he's like, I'm a star, I'm not doing this. So, they ended up going to seven foot three guy was black actually he died at a young age that's not when he rests in peace but to the seven foot two imposing dude instead and it worked out better because he was more physically imposing than Arnold was John claude van damme would have been more of like a stealthy which is what they were going for which is why the predator wore that camouflage type of getup he was supposed to be more of a stealthy assassin like not this big physical imposing hulk which i'm getting off topic but i have to say this too also was originally intended to be for the Terminator as well. The original Terminator was supposed to be a man who was in the movie by the name of Lance Henriksen, La Hendrickson, who was an alien as well. Um, but he played a cop in the movie. And he was originally supposed to be a Terminator because he was an infiltrator, supposed to look like a normal person. Last minute, they got a different idea. They approached Arnold. Arnold didn't want to do it. James Cameron convinced him and the rest is history. True story. <laughs> and I like this one. This is the next one. I always will argue back and forth. Again, it's not arguing. It's banter amongst friends. If you comment and you're not being a jerk, I'll banter with you. If you like something and I don't, 
Y'all do it to me. This was trash. Can't believe you liked it. You got the wrong order. So on. So, this is from the Chipotle video. Those who don't know, I think Chipotle's mid. This is what it is. Chipotle's mid. Sometimes it's okay. A lot of times it's more often times than not. It's very salty. Whatever. So people in the Chipotle video, because some of y'all will, you know, y'all go to town for Chipotle. Y'all might well be CEOs of Chipotle. You feel me? I don't mind that. It's a passion. I love passion. So a lot of the comments said stuff like this. Some of you brought up the fact that I brought up a DoorDash order and they won't fill it up as well. It doesn't change the fact that it tastes like shit. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. But this is the same thing. He said, bro, a bowl is the only thing to get from Chipotle. LOL. Along with the chips and guac. A lot of people brought that up. The only thing you get from Chipotle is a bowl. No one gets the burrito. And I'm going to counter with this. What is in the bowl? If I took this dinner and I wrapped it in a tortilla and ate it, it's going to taste the same. Plus the tortilla. Panda Express took orange chicken in lo mein. Hear me out. Let me talk. And they put it in a tortilla. Y'all hear my voice going up in octaves, bro? Because I'm incredulous at these comments sometimes. Now listen again. Panda Express took orange chicken in lo mein. They don't go in a damn tortilla. They put it in there. And they rolled it up. And every person I've seen who's eating that says it tastes good. You know why? Because orange chicken... And lo mein from Panda Express is good. It's tasty. It don't matter. You can put it on a car bumper. It's still finna be good. So if I take Chipotle's lackluster in the roster of ingredients and put it in a burrito instead of having it in a freaking bowl, you're telling me that it doesn't taste good anymore. Make it make sense. Bro, the bowl, it's the same sh mm. It's exactly the same. They just put it in a burrito. It's not good. Chipotle has about 20 ingredients. Maybe five are good. Even the people who eat there know that. Y'all get the same damn order every time because everything else is mid. Okay? The nachos are a freaking uh, 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 darts on a board, bro. They're good sometimes. Half the time, they take the nachos... And they just, it looked like they put, like, black people cook sugar and Kool-Aid, bro. They just salt the hell out of them, and you eat them, and I'm, the whole time, bro. And I like salt. You know how much sodium I eat? Not in them chips. And then they overlime them. How do you overlime a chip? Actually, I work at Chipotle. Shut up. You don't work at every location. <laughs> you don't. Chipotle has lots of locations, bro. You are not the authority, bro. Every Chipotle has different quality stuff. You might have a good location. Maybe they don't salt yours. I didn't get salty chips last time. Wasn't bad. But saying they didn't put enough of ingredients in my burrito because I ordered it on DoorDash didn't change the fact that it's freaking mid. Chipotle in 2010 was absolutely elite. It's not that good anymore. Y'all need to face facts. It just is what it is. It ain't the bowl. And I'm not a guac expert. Maybe. I know they charge you for it. I know most don't. I know Qdoba don't. Qdoba def don't. Qdoba... Don't get me started, bro. But y'all understand my point? That is not going to change anything. Saying my order was weird, it's the same six ingredients. They just manifest in four different ways. And the burrito and the burrito bowl are literally identical. If you would have said, oh, it's better in a quesadilla, might have gave you something because you heat it up. Bottom line is, Chipotle is mid. That's my opinion. You can like it. You're not a bad person. I'm not going to eat your lunch for that. I don't want your lunch because you got a Chipotle bowl. So, let's get an a-hole comment in. One, one a-hole. One a-hole. That sounds great. I don't know who this person is. Can't tell. No matter. But they wrote this, and I happened to see it. I didn't reply to it. I just let it go. Because it's not malicious. It's just like, what's wrong with you? So this person wrote, I don't know what video it's on. They wrote, I stopped watching you because you complain too much. To which somebody came to my defense. Thank you. They said, Okay. And they said, in reply to the person that wrote okay, I'm just saying that most people don't like negativity. Look how Mikey Chen had to change. First of all, I don't know who the hell Mikey Chen is. Second of all, what? What are you even saying? What does that mean? 
I'm just saying most people don't like the negativity. Did you think I wrote that? I don't give a shit if you think I complain too much. Number one, I literally sat there and said we moved when Popeyes didn't give me $30 worth of a $40 meal. I didn't say nothing. I've had my order messed up multiple times on DoorDash. I still don't complain. I feel like I'm really not a complaining person. Am I complaining? Nah, if I don't like something, I say it. But even that, I like damn near everything I eat. It's rare that I have something and I'm like, I don't really like it. The minute I do, there's always one person like, see, it's food. Just eat it, bro. I have a channel that reviews food. <laughs> Look, I understand that I do also do the whole mukbang thing, but I am not, and I'm not saying these negatively. I, I, I don't look at myself as a traditional channel like that. I'm not doing videos where I'm just sitting and eating and being like, mm, this is good. That's not what I'm doing. My background comes from doing food reviews. So a majority of the time I'm doing reviews and when I cook my own meal, I don't shut up, bro. I'm here to talk. I'm here to chop it up with y'all. Why the hell do I not want to talk? I'm sure there's plenty of those ASMR channels. Y'all probably like them. And that's nothing wrong with that. Go watch them. But to write in all caps, I stopped watching you because you complained too much. You're fucking watching me. <laughs> what you, how can you say you stopped? Or are you saying that you stopped while you were watching me to write that? That's passion. Thank you. I don't really get it. But again, I don't think everybody has to like me. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a program, it's, it's a show, it's a, whatever you want to call it, but I'm just being myself. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure there's plenty of people that watch my videos, saw it, and said, I don't like this dude, turn me off. That's cool. But what did that solve? And I think that's why he wrote okay, because, like, that's kind of how I was reading. I was like, all right. Like, thank you. Why are you yelling at me? Why do people yell at me? And I always have to say this before I turn to the next thing. I have to say this. And it usually comes from negative people, and I still don't understand it. For the love of everything that I love, love. Can you please stop liking your own comments? Stop it. Why are you doing that? And I know you're doing it. I don't have a million subs, bro. If I check the comment, and it says one minute ago, 48 seconds ago, and it has a like there, you liked your own comment. You dropped by on my page. Cool, thank you. Said something negative like, I can't stand this guy, he's weird, he paints his nails, I don't like his voice, he talks too much. And then to double down on your own toxicness, you double tapped your own comment for validation. And you think I'm weird. You're your own hype man on an internet account that's anonymous and you want to make yourself seem more relevant by liking your own comment. Do you make posts on Instagram and like your own post? You probably do. Damn. You're your own hype. I like that. Be your own hype man, but you like your own comment. Like, the equivalent of me again i know i'm a millennial so i quit everything to real life because humans there's a human element to even writing a comment and if you were walking down the street and you saw me first of all i know you went over your mouth because you ain't really like that bro but anyway if you saw me and you were like bro you corny as hell bro you paint your nails would you actually like step behind yourself and be like yeah it's 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 just giving projection it's weird it's very weird and I'm weird. And that, I don't do. That's strange. You probably do like to ask me a question stuff on Instagram, right? And you write a question to yourself. I know nobody can see that. I know people be doing it too because I've caught people. Listen, if you want to be negative on somebody's page, I can't stop you. If you feel the need, you feel compelled that I got to get this off my chest and say something with your whole chest, say it. But don't like your own comment. Please don't like your own comment. Come on, we're better than that. Like, come on now. I know you're down bad if you're writing negative stuff on people's pages. Happy people don't do stuff like that, but doubling down on that by liking your own comment, being your own hype man for your own validation, you're already projecting. Now you're projecting the projection. Damn. Stop it. Get some help. More slight toxicity. Again, I say slight because some people think it's cool to say some negative. 
and this wasn't really negative, but a lot of times people would be like, yo, I love your videos, but like, you suck. <laughs> I'm not joking either. Some people would do that. So, in this case, it said, why is his table so effing high? That is annoying the S-H-I-T out of me. Did a great job, though. <laughs> that was on a Whisk Leaf video. My table is high because my chair is low. My chair is low because I don't need my whole torso because the shot would look weird if the camera was high because my tripod would be set up. It just makes more sense. This is a small chair. If you watch a lot of videos that people that do videos like this do, there's a discrepancy with the chair. Some people, instead of having a low chair, what they will do instead is they will prop up their stuff by putting a platform here so that the food is right in your face like this. So that they're not showing themselves. That's all it is. That's why the table is so effing high. For people who don't know, I am six feet, one inches tall. I am not short. <laughs> I'm not. Not 5'7", I'm not. You a short king out there, I love you, but I'm not short. Um, and one more, slightly toxic, not toxic. Again, it's okay to be critical. I prefer constructive. If you just wanna be like slightly rude, I'm cool with that too. Nothing wrong with it. But there's also a lot of questions that come from people that are graduates of uh, YouTube State University, uh, YouTube Tech, uh, the, the doctor program. What I mean when I say that is sometimes people will say things that are more concerned about the food that I'm eating or something in the food or something of that nature and say that that's not good for you or, or something of that matter. While I understand your concern, I don't. Um, I know there are some people, and I've talked about this numerous times, you don't have to, people watching this right now, you watch all my content, you know what I'm talking about. I pretty much have an idea of what I'm doing. But sometimes there will always be someone or something that says something like this, not malicious, I think it was more of a curious question. So they asked, they said, what about the sodium and the salt? That's what the question says. And again, I'm not saying this to be rude. Um, I don't know if you meant to write that, just in case you didn't. Um, sodium and salt are the same thing. Um, salt is sodium, NaCl, sodium chloride, Na sodium Cl chloride. Um, table salt, iodized salt, sea salt, you get the idea. Salt is it's what sodium, the count of it. Uh, anyway. Anyway, I think they were saying there's too much sodium in my food. Believe it or not, people that have pre-existing health conditions are more susceptible to high blood pressure, um, and salt won't help that. People who live sedentary lifestyles um, are more predisposed to hypertension, high blood pressure, things of that nature, and salt won't help that. People who are not either of those things, myself, I'm very active and I don't have any pre-existing health conditions. I've never had a problem with high blood pressure, even when I was overweight. Salt doesn't do what you think it does. Can it temporarily raise your blood pressure under certain circumstances if you're really like, yes. But as an athlete, I was actually told to over salt my food by the physicians because it doesn't do what you think. And for me, if I don't consume enough salt, I actually will start cramping. Two or three weeks ago, during the heat wave, I, cons I tried to be an active little, you know, person that I am. And I went out, and I went out for my walk, my bike ride, and it was a heat wave, it was about 97 degrees. I started to cramp, because the day before, I didn't eat. I had an extended fast. So I started cramping, because I didn't have a sodium meal. And in college, I had an issue, the only issue that I have, because I do sweat a lot. I had an issue where I had to get an IV at halftime during most of my games in the beginning of the year because I would cramp, because I don't eat enough salt. Because growing up, I did not salt my food for the reasons that you're stating. And it actually was counterproductive. I had to start salting my food like a madman. <laughs> in college, no joke. When people are cramping or sweat profusely or you're very active, you actually need more salt than the average 2,500 milligrams as recommended by diet or health professionals. They're talking about people who don't move. The majority of Americans, especially, don't move. You wake up, you get in your car, you go sit in a desk for eight hours, you go home. That's not me. I'm always moving. I wake up, I walk my dogs, I either walk or bike ride to my work. Again, I have a perfectly good working car, I don't use it. I only use it when I have to. And when I work, I actually walk or ride my bike depending on the weather. I ride my bike or walk to work. While I'm at work, 
because I work in the fitness industry, I have clients, I have other people's clients, I don't sit down. I'm walking around, working people out, look, checking people's workouts, doing different things, I don't stop moving. And then I'm, when I'm done with that, I work myself out, and then I walk or bike right home. This is the most that I sit <laughs> during the day. I'm very active. I need the salt. And I've been adamant about telling people, do not eat like me. My dietary needs are not yours. You don't need to eat 200 plus grams of protein because there's a very high probability you're not 200 pounds. That's why I don't list my macros. Because you're not my macros. You can use the ingredients and make your own interpretation of it, but don't follow my macros, don't follow my calories, and don't follow the way I eat. I am so used to fasting that it doesn't bother me to not eat. Most people don't want to do that and can't. That doesn't make me better than you, it just means that I'm used to doing it. I can go days without eating. I've done it. I used to do it when I did eating challenges. I would eat for two days before the challenge. And then another day afterwards, or backwards. Yeah. So, even with those meals, which were 10,000 calorie fast food meals, literally, the next day, would I feel a little bloated? Yes, I would go on a walk and be back to my normal weight. I felt like crap, but my weight was fine. My blood pressure was fine, and I did monitor it. So... That's that. Also, there's another person that says stop eating fake sugar. It wasn't in the comments. I have to reiterate this. <sighs> Aspartame. Okay? Sucralose. And even saccharin, which is the old sweetened low. Nobody uses sweetened low besides old people. But that was like the original artificial sweetener. Have been heavily researched at this point. And anybody who thinks that it causes cancer did not read the literature. The literature where they had, where they talked about fake sugar and it causing cancer, was in laboratory mice or rats. We're not rats, and we're not mice. Some of you are rats, but that's not us watching. We don't snitch. And the amount of, of poison in this tense, the amount of fake sugar that they were consuming, would be like you having this entire room filled with aspartame, sucralose, things like that. And then they got cancer. Understand this, when you're talking about any kind of food, the dosage makes the poison. Do you don't understand what I'm saying that is? Anything in too high of amounts can be toxic. Now understand what I'm saying when I say this. You see this gallon? This is comprised of 90% water. How much actual fake sugar is in here? How much mix is in here? This ain't Kool-Aid, bro. The mix that I have is this big and it's meant for a quart and I put it in a gallon. That is not a toxic dose. That's the equivalent of having a, 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 a liter of soda, fake sugar soda. Fake sugar has been, it, it's been extensively researched at this point and it is actually safe. If you're that blessed and miffed about it, then don't. But I would suggest that you look at the labels of 90% of the stuff that you eat because there's stuff added in everything that everyone eats, including vegans. They don't even realize it. I'm not saying that negatively, but you have to understand that aspect. The doses makes the poison. There are traces of toxic things, things that are toxic to humans, in rice, in fruit, and in most of the stuff we eat. I'm talking things like arsenic. You don't believe me? Look it up on their own websites. Bananas contain traces of arsenic. Arsenic is highly poisonous to humans in larger doses. The dosage makes the poison. Same thing as doctors recommending you have a glass of wine a day versus drinking 14 bottles of wine a day. Which one is going to lead to cirrhosis of the liver? You understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying this to be condescending or anything, and I know there's someone out there saying, well, doctors said that smoking was... Yes, and then less than a decade later, because they researched it, they realized that they were wrong and they went away with it. Sucralose, aspartame, and even saccharin against wheat and law have been around for years. If you want to worry about any of them, funnily enough, the only one that doesn't have an extensive background of research because it's still relatively new in the game is actually stevia, which is a naturally occurring sugar. That's not synthetic. Stevia is natural. And it's the only one that doesn't have a large research base, yet people seem to assume that it's the safest. I actually don't consume stevia. I do a little bit, but it's my least favorite of it. Most of the things that I have are in aspartame and sucralose. Sugar, on the other hand, you should be careful with. If you aren't managing how much you're having and how much fiber you're taking and other things, it still matters. Sugar can't kill you. Excess sugar, sedentary lifestyle, caloric deficit, no. Caloric surplus, mm, now you're going to be obese. Obesity leads to a lot of things. So it's not the sugar that kills you. 
And a lot of people also think that diabetes is caused by consuming too much sugar. So sometimes when I have a sugary meal, I will actually see people that comment, you're gonna get diabetes. Now, you may not know this, but I'm going to actually give you some literature of the main causes of diabetes. I'm going to read them for you. I wanna clear the air on some of this stuff. Again, this is not my own stuff. This is from the Mayo Clinic, okay? You can go to the CDC, the L. Valley stuff, the ADA, I should say, and things. But I am going to give you the leading factors of diabetes. The risk factors. Weight, being overweight. Fat distribution. Inactivity. Things that I am not. Not saying this sarcastically. I'm telling you, one of the worst things you can be to get sick, diabetes, worse, is overweight and sedentary. Being overweight, being obese, is, is a leading factor of a lot of sicknesses, and people don't realize that. Being at a manageable body fat is literally the healthiest thing you can do. Manageable, I said. I didn't say lean, super lean. Manageable. Just, that, that is the truth. Family history. Yes, if you have a history of diabetics in your family, it can definitely be something genetic. Race and ethnicities. Yes, as a black person, I do understand that. Are there people in my family that are pre-diabetic? Yes. Have I been tested for that? Yes. Am I a pre-diabetic? No. Blood lipid levels. In other words, high cholesterol. High levels of triglycerides. Your age. The risk for diabetes increases as you get older, especially after age 45. Pregnancy-related risks. Anything that's taxing on your body. Polycystic ovary syndrome. Again, anything that's on your body. And also, insulin resistance if you're noticing things like um, uh, darkened skin um, around your armpits and, and your neck. Um, things like that. But some of the leading ways to prevent diabetes. More physical activity, losing excess pounds, eating foods that are higher in fiber. Did you just see that giant plate of beans I just ate? How about the greens? I know you only see certain parts of my meals, but I, I do have ideas of what I'm doing. Um, so I just wanted to clear because a lot of people do comment that whole, like, you know, oh, you're going to get diabetes. That's not how it works. And I'm not saying this to be condescending. I know there's going to be somebody out there saying, oh, well, I'm going straight from the clinic. And I'm telling you this from everything that I've ever studied, every literature that I have ever read, anything. When I had unhealthy things in my body, meaning went to the doctor and had certain precursors, believe it or not, guess how it went away? By losing weight. By being more active. When I was more sedentary, when I had a back injury, when I gained weight, things like that happen. If you are the type of person who sits around doing nothing all day, you absolutely cannot eat like me. And if you are a person that has a higher body fat or a higher risk because of family conditions and things of that nature, things that you should get checked out by a doctor. If the doctor says you are pre-diabetic or things of that nature, you have got to get it looked at. There are people in my family that do have these sorts of things on my mother's side and not my father's side. And thank goodness, blessingly, again, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but I don't have any of it. There are people on that side of the family that did, and they cannot, and I'm just telling you that. So, yes, and as a black person, yes, pre-diabetes, things like sickle trait, and things, these are things that you have to worry about. Get them checked. I'm always getting checked up by a doctor. I get blood labs every three to six months. That's not a joke. Biggest thing you can do for yourself is get yourself down to a manageable body fat. Manageable, again, I'm not talking about being skinny. I'm talking about a manageable body fat and get active move. I know it's hard sometimes, but even if you walk further from your car or, or get up for bathroom breaks if you can at work, whatever it is, but try to take more steps and be more active. It has literally made me go from when I was super heavy, not super, but again, I was about 277 pounds was my heaviest, to the person that's allowed to do these things today. And above all, Read literature, again, not just some dude on TikTok, but actual scientific back studies with, with work cited and, and conspirements and controls and so on. And also consult a doctor. Believe it or not, sometimes doctors aren't up on newer things, especially the older ones. They're not. I'd, I'd hate to say that. You know, I hear things like, my doctor said not to. Okay. Again. Uh, the things that there's improvements and, and advancements and studies and things of that nature. It's the equivalent of saying that uh, a dial-up modem is better than uh, a freaking uh, a quantum uh, gigabit internet that I have. They both worked, but one's a lot more efficient. 
So I'll leave it at that. Those are my questions and stuff for today. It was a long video, but I wanted to get to a bunch of them. Again, hit the like button if you watched all this video. Um, let me know if you have some questions, and I will do this more often if people do. Again, if this video flops, I'm not going to do it because that means you didn't want to watch it. That's the biggest thing. I enjoy doing it, but it's not something that's essential. I want to make content that's more tailored towards everybody and not just one person. So we'll be back tomorrow. More content. I love you. On a hand signs, they made it to YouTube.